After watching your favorite editor's newest video, you realized that everyone started using this awesome target tracking effect. So you think to yourself, hmm, maybe if I start using that effect, my videos will finally go viral. So you boot up your PC, launch After Effects, get ready, only to realize you have absolutely no clue on how to actually make it. If only there was someone who could teach me. Well, don't worry. Because today I will show you step by step everything you need to know and how you can make it in After Effects. So make sure to stick along and don't miss out because I'll be revealing some juicy secrets. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. And what we have to do first is to create the actual shape that we are later going to put onto our video. So I just prepared a composition and what we want to do first is head to the top row and select the rectangle tool. I'm just going to set the color to white for now. Press OK. And while holding down shift, you can now draw a rectangle. This is just going to make it proportional. Make it about this size. And then under your align panel, just quickly center it to the middle. Now this rectangle is just going to be our base that we build our effect onto. Now to create the actual shape that we want for our effect, I'm going to just zoom in a bit to make it a bit more visible. Enable my grid. You can do that by pressing here and selecting grid. And this is just going to help with the proportions a bit. Now head to the top, select the pen tool, and we're now going to create another shape layer on top of our current shape layer. And what we want to do is we're just going to basically create a stroke that kind of looks like this. So we're going to set three points. Just click onto your screen. And I'm going to change the color to red so it's more visible. And as you can see, we now have this stroke. And once you made sure everything is proportional, we can now go ahead and disable the grid again because we're not going to need it anymore. And now as you can see, we created this red stroke. Now obviously this is nowhere near where we want our final product to look like. So let's go ahead and tweak the settings a bit. And we're going to start by selecting the shape layer we just created, the red one. And I'm first of all going to adjust the size of it. I'm going to put the stroke width from 10 down to 5. Now click on this little triangle that says add and select offset paths. Now once you've done that, you should see that in the bottom left under the layer controls, this new panel opened. So just click on it and put the amount from 10 down to 8. As you can see, we now have a space in between the lines. And next what we're going to do, we're going to make it a bit smoother. To do that, just head on to add again and select round corners. As you can see, it's now rounded up and already looks a bit smoother. And for now, you can disable the shape that we created earlier, which is this rectangle. Do that by just clicking onto the layer and hit this little eye next to it. Next, we want to put a hole into the end of the stroke. So we're going to go ahead on add again and select trim paths. Just open it again and put the end from 100% down to 95. As you can see, there's now a little hole in here. So we're going to go ahead to the offset and increase it till it fits. Now do the same for the other end. So we're just going to go ahead on add again, trim paths, open it up, put it from 100 down to 95. And now increase the value till it fits our expectations. Once that's done, you can close the windows again. And we now want to make some changes to the shape. So we're going to open shape one and under stroke, scroll all the way down. You're going to see this point that's called taper. Open that one. And I'm going to put the start length from zero to 35% and the same for the end length as well. As you can see, it now already looks way better. But to now put it as a square, we're going to go ahead and select the shape layer, duplicate it by pressing control and D, then right clicking onto the newly duplicated layer, going to transform and hit flip horizontal. Do the same thing again for the new layer, duplicate it by pressing control and D, right click onto it, select transform. But this time, hit flip vertical. Now one last time we're going to duplicate the layer by pressing ctrl and d, right click on it, go to transform and hit flip horizontal. As you can see we now already have this square shape and once we finish with that step we're going to go ahead and enable our control layer again which was the one we originally created and as you can see mine doesn't fit exactly onto it so I'm just going to go ahead select this layer, press p on my keyboard and increase the x value until it fits just like that. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom and by doing this you can ensure that your square has the right proportions. Now we're going to delete the bottom layer which is this white rectangle. And we're going to be left with this. Now what we're going to do next, we're going to select all the layers at once by pressing shift and select them all of them and press control shift and C to pre-compose them. Once that's done, this window should open. Make sure the bottom option is selected and also that you enable this check mark. Press OK. And what that does, it basically puts all the layers into one composition. And now once we have the proper shape, we're going to add some effects to make it look even better. Now I don't want to have mine in this plain red tone. So I'm going to go ahead, open the effects and presets panel and search for S underscore texture flux. Drag it on to the layer and I'm just going to disable the background so you can see a bit more clear. As you can see, it changes the color and I'm going to put the color zero from this blue to a dark red. Now also I'm going to change the color one and put it to a bit brighter red, just like this. And if you take a closer look at it now, you can see that you have this gradient going on and this faded colors, not just one plain color. Next, I want to add a bit of depth to it. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a drop shadow, drag it onto the layer and I'm going to put the opacity from 50 up to 100. I'm going to leave the distance at five and put the softness to 10. And for the final touch, I'm going to go ahead and add a glow. I personally like to use deep glow. So I'm going to go ahead and search for deep glow, but be careful when applying it to your layer, you have to make sure that you drag it all the way to the top. So that's on top of 
all the other effects that we just put. And as you can see, this is way too bright. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the exposure from 1 down to 0 0.7 and the radius from 500 down to 450. And now, if you say you're too lazy to do all that, don't worry, I totally get you. And that's why I put a free overlay uploaded as a PNG file on my Discord server. The link to that is in the description and make sure to check it out because you don't only get free stuff, but there's also lots of other editors who can assist you when you need help or rate your edits. It's an overall great environment and awesome opportunity to boost your editing level to the top. Now to add our newly created target to a clip, we first of all are going to deactivate the preview because the first thing we need to do is to add a tracker to our clip. And to do that, just click onto the layer your clip has, head to the right and under the tracker panel, click track motion. Zoom in a bit and as you can see, you now have two tiny squares that appear and you could just drag them a bit larger like this and now adjust them so they are on the character's nose. Now what this step does, it basically tracks the movement of the character's face so we can later on have our target exactly follow his face. So once you've adjusted the squares onto the character's nose, just head to the right and click this analyze forward button and it's now going to analyze your clip. But note that this might take a while depending on how fast your computer works and how long your clip is. So once it's done analyzing, you should see that you have all these little track points that are going to tell you after effects where your character's head is moving. So now we're going to head back to our main composition and to do that, click onto your layer with the square, press S on your keyboard to bring up the scaling property and now by increasing or decreasing the value you can adjust the size of it. I'm just going to make mine a bit smaller and also now press R to bring up the rotation property and rotate it a bit just like this. Now I'm going to drag it onto the middle of his face so it fits. Now select the square layer and press Control and D to duplicate it. This just means you now have the same layer twice again and we're going to go ahead onto the top one we just duplicated and press S to bring up the scaling property and now decrease the value till it looks like this. But obviously we don't want both of our squares to be in the same color so we're going to go ahead to our effects and presets panel and search for s underscore tint go ahead drag it onto the top layer click on to tint darks and put it from black to white press ok and as you can see now I have one white and one red square now also click onto the top one and press r to bring up the rotation because we don't want them to start in the same place i'm gonna just decrease the value a bit till it looks like this now also for the squares to move while the video is playing we're gonna go ahead and create some rotation keyframes so it doesn't just stay in the same place so go ahead click this little stopwatch next to rotation and go to the end of your clip now the Decrease or increase the amount of rotation depending on how you want it to be. I'm just going to put it up a bit so it looks like this. Now for the second square we created, we're going to do the exact opposite. Meaning that if the first one is tilting to the right, the other one is going to tilt to the left. This is all just going to look a bit better and I advise you to do it. So because I have my red one move to the right, I'm going to make the white one move to the left. And to do that, we're going to again go to the beginning of our clip, set a keyframe for rotation, go all the way to the end. And this time we're going to decrease the value instead of increasing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it to minus... 93. And if you now play your clip, you can see that the squares are already moving. There's only one thing missing, which is tracking the squares to the character's face. And to do that, go ahead, select both the top layers that contain the squares, recompose them by pressing Ctrl, Shift and C. Again, choose the bottom option and enable this check mark. Press OK. And now go back onto your original clip where we earlier put the head tracking on, right click onto it. Press open and choose open layer. As you can see, the head tracking is still here. And under the tracker panel, we're now going to select the track type, put it to transform, click onto motion target and hit edit target. And now in this extra window, choose the layer where both our squares are in, which in my case is the pre 4. Click on it and press OK. Head to the right and click on apply. Now this little window, we're going to choose X and Y simply because we want our tracker to be applied in both directions. Press OK. And as you can see, it now tracks onto the face. If you don't like the positioning with it or want to overall change it, no problem, just pre Compose the layer again, the top one, by pressing Ctrl, Shift and C. Press OK, and now you can just drag it along however you want it. In my case, I want it a bit more to the right, so I'm going to put it like this. Once that's done, this is what it should look like. And congratulations, you now finally know how to make this awesome tracker. If you liked this video and it helped you, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below telling me what tutorial you want to see next. Also, make sure to check out my shop. It's the first thing in the description because I'm still currently running a huge Black Friday sale. You can get up to 70% off of my premium presets, which will help you improve your edits and boost your quality to the top. Make sure to be fast because it's probably going to end soon. And you don't want to miss this one-time opportunity. Also, as I said, feel free to join my Discord server. We're a huge community of editors who help each other all day. You can get free stuff and just talk to me. And if you want to see me crank 90s, make sure to check the link in the description to my Twitch channel. I'm frequently live streaming on there, so make sure to not miss it out. And as always, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.